Hello there. Welcome to Healthy Cooking with your friendly Italians. I'm Jim Burrow. I'm Marilyn Burrow. And we're going to be talking food. Uh, we're going to be traveling uh, through uh, Italy. And we got a special treat for you today. We're going to talk to you about how to make prosciutto. And uh, uh, we're going to be going down through Parma, uh, where all the best prosciuttos are made. And then into the uh, capital of the Italian cuisine, which is Bologna, so they say. But anyways, we're going to do that. But before we do, I got a couple other things I want to talk about, Marilyn. Okay. Uh, you know how to get a good night's sleep? Well, I think you told me earlier there was uh -huh. something about eating pasta. You got it. Well, Eat. as a pasta maker's daughter, it sounds good to me. <laughs> I knew that you would you'd go with it, right? So it, if you eat pasta without meat sauce, you're going to have a better night's sleep. And also, about 30 minutes before you go to sleep, you want to stretch and yawn, and that's going to help. Okay. They say dogs do that, so That's they right. stretch and so, yawn, so I don't know. I mean, you so, get all this information. I'm never too sure about it, but that's okay. So sounds eat good more to me. pasta. It eat sounds good pasta. to me. Okay. <laughs> and the other thing uh, which is close to my heart is red wine. Right. And they say that red wine will increase your memory. And as Supposedly. I get older and you get older, that could help out a lot. I know, but crossword amazing what crossword puzzles and reading will do too. So you're blowing you're blowing it for me. <laughs> well, you know, try them all. That would be my suggestion. <laughs> I think I'll stay with the red wine. Okay. All right. <coughs> the other thing, <clears throat> excuse me. The other thing I wanted to uh, talk to you about before we uh, we went off to Parma is this weekend we had an opportunity to make a couple of uh, uh, stops that we found very, very good, and I wanted to pass them on to you. Uh, one is we went to the Clarence Hotel on Friday night, wasn't it? Yes, and they had music on Friday night. The place was rocking. And it was really rocking. Their new menu seems to be, you know, it, it, it's, um, it's a good menu, and it's not hugely expensive. They've reduced some of the prices. And it's a lighter fare, I It think. is, and they've reduced some of the prices of their drinks. I, it was a fun evening, to, and it was fun to see that many people at the Clarence, it to see that evening. it was really yeah. hopping, and that downtown is hopping. You look at Friday and Saturday night downtown, and there aren't even any parking places. That's so right. hopefully all this will help Seneca Falls become a place on the map. I had... <laughs> They, a hamburger there. I think it's the best hamburger I ever had. It was really, really good, and they and they do their own corned beef. Uh, the, what's the the company that now runs the Clarence? Well, the the, the uh, manager is from the Sherwood, but he also does several of these upstate um, sort of inns in small um, towns like Skinny Atlas and where Colgate is, and now here, and he seems to have the a knowledge of how to bring business it, to the small community, you know, with these wonderful buildings. The Sherwood's beautiful. I'm sure the Colgate Inn is beautiful, and certainly the Clarence so is. Give it a try. I think you'll so, you'll like it. The other place we went to, and Jim, I this is a place that you have to go. I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm talking to him over here. It's the Asian food market. It's in Rochester. It's a they, new one. It's a new one. It's over on Brighton, Henrietta Town Line Road. It is an enormous market of all wonderful kinds of, of uh, oriental foods. They have one area where they roast their their meats. They have whole ducks hang, hanging, which they roast. They have uh, slabs of pork that they serve. And don't they sell whole fish, too? They sell fresh, fresh fish. fish. They yeah. sell fish that are lives in tanks that they will take out and, and scale and, and sell you. Uh, they have a great area for vegetables. They have all the wonderful dumplings. Right. Uh, they have anything. You think you're in a Chinese, well, Chinatown like in New York or Toronto or Absolutely. something where you see all these ingredients. So. And the yeah. prices are very, very, very reasonable. Uh, and you can get just about anything you want in, in, in Oriental Surprise. Right. So give it, a, give it a try. All right. 
let's get away from that. All right, now we're going to Parma. We're going to Parma. Okay. <laughs> Parma is south of Venice. Yes. And it's a uh, fairly hilly country. And when you get into the area, you look up on the hills and you'll see these barns, these red barns. And at the end of uh, each side of the barn is opened up. The, the doors are opened up. So you get air. It, there's a, a complete air flow through. That's, that's yeah, the whole purpose. Right. And so it, the air f flows through it. And the, these hams are a uh, 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 cure. They're not cooked. They're rubbed with salt. And I'll give salt. you a recipe on something like that. And they'll stay up there six months to a year. Right. And up until a few uh, months ago, we could not get them in the United States. The United States would not let them bring because them. Because they're, they're, they're not pre-cooked. They're, they're raw meat, basically, that has been cured. Although it's a time-honored way of curing meat from the day one. Oh, and fish in many cultures has right. been salted. And, you know, it's never been a bad thing for people. Right. So. so anyways, I... Uh, looking out to try to find a recipe for a prosciutto. Right. And one of my concerns was, uh, is there a way of cutting the time down from six months to less? And I was able to get a hold through John Similo, Ag Anello and Teresa Campagna, and they gave me a recipe. It, yeah for a pork loin prosciutto. In other words, there's no bone there's in it. There's no bone to deal with, and it also can be done in the refrigerator, so. That's my secret. Well, oh, that's your secret? Uh, that's well, mine. Well, we'll see if it works, yeah. but yes. Right, and uh, when you use a, when you're using a pork loin, number one, uh, there's no bone in it, and it, it has a, a less of a tendency to go bad on you, and it only, it only takes uh, about six weeks hopefully so let me let's go through the process of making you probably you probably won't do this well, but we, it, we, we haven't t really tested it either where it's in the middle of doing it jim is trying to make it we've got it in the second refrigerator that but it looks like it's starting to look like prosciutto yeah. i would say it looks a little bit like it anyway yeah and you see the string on the top you see the string on the top i hang it Inside the refrigerator. Right. Okay. So what I what I did is I took a pork loin, and they they they're about about this big, and the first thing I did underneath the pork loin, uh, there is a a strip of meat uh, that's that's sort of flabby. You want to pull that pull on, that off, pull that yeah. off, and then this is this is not now my my recipe. This is uh, Teresa's an angle and. And Nello, excuse me, is you uh, take salt, a lot of salt, kosher salt, two cups of kosher shot, salt, and two tablespoons of red pepper, ground pepper, uh, granulated garlic, rosemary, and oregano. And you put this all to cuisinart and, and, and uh, mix it up. And then you uh, clean, wash and clean your, your loin, dry it off, and rub this, this into... Uh, this pork, uh, this pork loin, and you want quite a bit of it because that you really pretty is heavy. pretty heavy because that's what's that's really what's cured. curing it. That's yes. what's cooking it. Right. Then you take it and you put it on a tray at a forty-five degree angle in the refrigerator, and you leave it in there for twenty-four hours, and the water and the juices will uh, uh, will come out. You turn it over and do it again on the other side. The end of those two days, you cut it into thirds. Now you got to you, when you cut them. There's there's the ends that are are now exposed that hasn't been rubbed. You rub those ends, and you put a uh, string through the top of the uh, poke a hole through the meat and hang it, and uh, and hopefully we're going to have prosciutto. Now I this what what I showed you is one week old. Uh, it, it should be done in about six weeks. So I will give you progress reports. Yes, we'll report on it and right. see how it works. But we're, you know, Jim is always experimenting. So that's right. part of, you know, enjoying cooking is that you really do want to experiment with all kinds of things and find new things and new ways of doing things. And supposedly you'll know that it's done when it do, it's not the meat, when you touch it, isn't jelly like it's it's firm. Yeah, I mean, if so, you really looked at a real whole prosciutto, that would be very hard. 
Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you looked at it in in a store and then I'll something. bring it down to my buddies when it's ready, <laughs> and I'll let them taste it. And if they don't fall over and die, <laughs> then I'll know it's right. Okay. Okay. All right. So. Try a prosciutto, maybe. <laughs> I, we'll see. I can't, let me know. All right. Now the other. Once you've made the this prosciutto, there's all kinds of things that you can do with it. You can uh, you can uh, roll it in a uh, roast asparagus and roll it in. You right. can put prosciutto in melon. Uh, put a little uh, ro uh, roasted peppers with olive oil right. and, and and drizzle it all over the top. Any kind of when you're using an antipasto or a salad. Yeah. But Jim has a recipe with, that you can use it in chicken or really, a chicken this breast. Is, this, this is this is really, simple. Yeah, this one we tried the other night and it, right. was, it was very good. You're going to take a chicken breast and you're going to cut through the middle of it and open it up like a book. All right? Pound it, pound it a little bit, salt and pepper it. Put a piece of prosciutto in there. Put a slice of provolone. Uh, put some uh, spinach or arugula. And then close it back up, right? Sprinkle it with a flour. I like to use the... Uh, Panko. The, well, no, the semolina. The semolina you use Sem on Semolina okay. flour. And uh, pound it a bit till it sticks together. And saute it. And you're done. The only problem that may occur, occur is that if your prosciutto is really salty, it might taste salty. So maybe a lemon sauce or something over it would, would help. Lemon sauce um, would do well. Or use it when it cools or is a leftover, putting it in a salad or something. Then it's very tasty that way by putting or, it in a salad. Or, Marilyn, even just taking a lemon, slicing it, and squeezing, squeezing a little lemon, lemon over, the top over it, it would be it very good. A, I think it should. Uh, it makes a, a wonderful, yes. wonderful dish. Right. So uh, I'm really excited about the prosciutto. So we'll see where it goes from there. All right. Now we're going to leave uh, leave uh, Parma, and we're going to go down farther south to the Bologna, which is considered where the best cuisine in Italy is. That's, well, that's questionable. What, that's what the Bolognese think. Yes. Now, you have to remember in Italy, everybody thinks their particular <laughs> cuisine is the very, very best. And it's always based on what is available in their communi community. I mean, if they live by the sea, they're doing a lot of seafood. If they right. are, are in a poor area and don't have a way of having heavy meat, then you're talking about chicken or that kind of thing because they don't have the way of dealing with um, pork or beef. But it all depends on what area you're in. But Bolognese... Bolognese is more of a meaty area. Yes, I mean, it is. There's a lot of meat Bologna. there. Bologna, yes. Yeah, Bologna. Uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful city. It's one of the oldest universities in the world right. is, in, uh, is in there. And they're very, very laid back people. You go, you walk down the streets and they're sitting in their cafes, uh, not drinking coffee. They're drinking Vinsanto. Now, Vinsanto is a sweet wine. And then they're taking can, Cantucci. Cantucci is, is the same it's thing as a biscotti. biscotti. I mean, they all have different names in different regions for different yeah. for the same thing. Yeah. And you dip the biscotti right. uh, into, the, into the wine and you eat it. It's, it's pretty good. It is. Yeah. Now, I, I could give you a recipe uh, for biscotti or Cantucci, but... You know what you do? Go, go down to Noni's. Mm -hmm. They got them there all done. They're wonderful, better than than you can make at home. You really need a good baker. I mean, we've tried them before, biscotti at home, and they, you have yeah. to double bake them and all kinds of things. So just go buy them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it would be my suggestion. We're not that good bakers. Anyways. I know. That isn't our forte. <laughs> <laughs> so you should, uh, you should try that. Well, one of the things uh, that... This area is famous for. They consider this the, the epitome, epitome of a of sauce. sauce. Yes, it is. And uh, it's a uh, bolognese sauce, which is a meat sauce. And it's it takes a while to cook. It takes about three hours to cook. And it's a little different than most of your meat sauces. Uh, and it's very, very rich. But uh, I want to I wanna share that, right. that, that with you. And uh, you take some canola oil and some butter and you heat that in a pan you eat uh, add onion and carrot that you put in the food processor so it's nice nicely fine season that with salt and pepper 
And then you want to get a, a pound. Uh, I, I like to use a combination of meat, uh, of veal, beef, and pork. Pork, right. I find the easiest way to do this in a ground meat, unless you want to grind it yourself, which is probably the preferable way, but if you go and buy a, a meatloaf mix, it works. So the, the only problem with the meatloaf mix, sometimes there's not enough fat in it, and you got to add a little fat in it. But anyways, get that, put that in there, and let that cook in with the uh, onions and the carrots. And the vegetables. And the and vegetables. It, it, that's the difference is that it is a ground meat in that it does have several vegetables right. in it compared to most sauces. And, yes. and you don't want to let it brown. You just want to get rid of the redness in it, okay? Then you're going to take some milk, whole milk, two cup, and you're going to pour that over this. And you're going to stir that around and let that cook until all the milk uh, has evaporated. Then you're going to add some wine, and uh, you're going to add the San Marzano tomato. Marilyn, tell, her, tell them about San Marzano. Well, San Marzano is supposed to be the finest tomato to make a tomato sauce. And they're it's supposed to be They're plum tomatoes, and they're supposed to be grown in sa the San Marzano area. Some cans say that they're San Marzano, some, and some of them that even say they are, I'm not too sure, but... Uh, I have found they don't have as many seeds, number one, That's so right. that, that helps with your sauce. I have found the San Marzano do make a big difference in when, when you make a sauce, and particularly if you're making a marinara sauce, I wouldn't use anything else but San Marzano. And she's very insistent on that. Yes, I time. am. And I've been told by my grandchildren and my, grand, my daughter-in-laws that I do make the best marinara sauce. So I I'll have to go, I'll have to, we'll does. have to go along with that recipe. Absolutely. <laughs> and now we go to the expert pasta person. What is the best pasta to have with that sauce? Well, it's called tagliatelle. And basically tagliatelle is basically ribbons. It means that they've cut them. They're wider than most noodles. And uh, it's, you know, that's the other thing about it, the Italian people. They really feel that the pasta goes with the sauce. And so for a bolognese sauce, you're supposed to use tagliatelle, uh, tagliatelle. which is cut. And they're probably, I would say, um, not quite a half an inch, but maybe um, a little, maybe a third of Something an inch. So you really sink your teeth in. Right. Yeah. Um, it's, it's the same as when you hear about linguine with clam sauce. They feel that there are certain things that go with certain pastas. The orchiette carries, you know, carries more sauce, so they'll use a more of a cream sauce. So they're very particular in Italy as to which pasta goes with each sauce. Well, you, you can go. use whatever you, you got want. got it right from the horse's <laughs> mouth. You can use whatever you want. Yes. <laughs> now, if you really want to become decadent, I'm going to give you a lasagna recipe that is good but is extremely rich. You know, we made that wonderful sauce. By the way, let's go for, back to that sauce for one moment. That's got to cook for three hours, Okay. The very recipe, low, yeah. Yeah, very low uh, temperature. I'm talking about the, the, the red sauce, bolognese sauce. sauce. Perfect for a slow cooker, a, uh, a crock pot. Put it in there, it do, a, a nice slow cooking, and it works out well. You know, After you've mixed everything up, throw it in there and cook it for three hours. So now, you want to make, you want to make a decadent lasagna, go to Barilla, uh, and buy the Barilla uh, flat sheets of lasagna, the no cook, all right? And you put some uh, of this wonderful uh, bolognese sauce on the bottom. Put your uh, strips of uh, lasagna on top, some more bolognese on top, and then make a bachamel sauce. Now, you know what a bachamel sauce is nothing more than a, a flour and, and milk it's with a cheese. Sauce, it's a cream basic, sauce, right? Basically with cheese in it, yes. And you pour some of that over the top. Then you go, not, keep that layers and layers it up, and you bake it. Uh, you don't have to cook. You don't have to cook the pasta at all, and it comes out. It's, it's very, very good and very, very filling. Uh, I, we haven't done that in years, but it, uh, it's, it's very good. It's, yeah. it's very good. So you might want to try that. Okay. So uh, I, I got another recipe for uh, some uh, no, no cook uh, 
uh, penne that you don't, you don't have to boil ahead of time. I'm going to save that to the next time, uh, and uh, we'll talk about it then. Because next time, next time I, I'm going to give you a recipe from Stanley Tucci. Do you know who Stanley Tucci is? Well, he's an actor. He's a very, very good actor, and he has a recipe that he used in a movie called uh, the what was the name of it, Marilyn? I think it was called The Big Night. The Big Night, and our son worked on it. Right. And he made this. They dish. made it in wherever near Brooklyn, someplace near New York. They made this movie. And it's called a steak oreganto. We'll try that. It's got red wine in it. Okay. And then we're going to do a panacotta. We might even get into. Uh, showing your aggressiveness and getting smashed potatoes, how to cook smashed potatoes, which is wonderful. Uh, that's all coming up uh, our, our next time around. And uh, enjoy being with you all today. And we'll see you in a couple weeks. Bye-bye. Bye now. Bye.